Okay, so our epilogue is stories by Cena Grace, who was the writer of the Tasty uh, short uh, that we talked about in the last episode, or last review, uh, which was the one where Pizzazz gets scammed into the, the photo shoot thing and she resolves it. And it's uh, the artist by the person whose name I couldn't pronounce well, Sivan Keenan, uh, who did the face-off show, the karaoke short, which I, I quite enjoyed. So... Uh, that's who's responsible for this. That's who's responsible for this. Do you know this, this single issue cost me nearly as much as the damn hardback that included the first two trade paperbacks, uh, the annual and two, uh, holiday specials plus a bunch of extras? Not as much. That was like 35 bucks, but this damn thing's like $25. <laughs> it's not even 25 pages. Um... So, uh, this epilogue takes place 20 years in the future. Um, and uh, they do a pretty nice job of uh, aging up the characters and making them look like they're all in their 40s. Um, there's, there's a couple shots in here where it's like, yeah, maybe they're just wearing really heavy makeup because they look pretty good for 40-something, right? Um, but for the most part, no, the, the characters look older and it's fun to see them that way. So... The idea here is um, someone is getting a, is it a Lifetime Achievement Award? It is um, Hall of Fame Award. The Misfits are getting a Hall of Fame Award. Because um, the holograms are no longer together. They, they broke up um, nearly 20 years ago. So, so like, you know, maybe 15 to 18 years ago. Uh, the Stingers are still together, but they're apparently has-beens. They're just touring around and doing shows at casinos and stuff. Which, you know, it, it is fine, but they're not the big prestigious names that they once were. But the Misfits, they stayed together. They, step, they kept making music, and they became Hall of Fame legends. <laughs> which is pretty great. Um, so they are at their uh, award ceremony. And they run into, um, uh, Pizzazz overhears Kimber, who's there mainly just to support, uh, uh, Stormer. And, um, oh, by the way, they, they're not together. Which is sad. But it's not too surprising. Whoever you were dating when you were 20, you're probably not with them now that you're in your 40s. It, you might be. You know, some people are with their uh, childhood sweethearts their entire lives, but it's not uncommon for that to happen. So for uh, Stormer and Kimber to, 20 years later, they're, they're, they're not married, they're not together. That's sad, but that does happen. And uh, a lot of, um, if you're going to do Gem and the Holograms and you're going to do it 20 years in the future... Man, the, the fan service stuff that you're like, ah, oh, Kimber and Stormer are gonna be married and everyone's gonna and, and everyone's gonna be happy. It's like, no, life is messy. Sometimes stuff happens. Um, so anyway, uh, Kimber is also there yelling at Eric, bad guy, um, because apparently Gem and the Holograms are gonna be opening for the Stingers Casino tour, but Gem and the Holograms isn't together, Eric. So. WTF mate and he says oh well um you know uh, after the fallout uh between you and your sister yeah Kimber hasn't spoken to Jerrica in 10 15 years or something like that uh Jerrica they had a bad album one of their al they tried something new something to it's not clear exactly what they did. She called it a stripped down album. Like maybe they just weren't using the synergy hologram effects or I'm not sure exactly what they were doing, but they had an album that was a swing and a miss. That happens. And then she around the same time she 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 licensed one of her songs to a soda pop which was then bought by some larger soda conglomerate. And that hit poorly on social media. The holograms were known as Gemini sellouts. And 
Um, so she just uh, basically, uh, all, Kimber, has, so she got in a fight with Kimber, and then she dumped the, the, um, the Starlight Girls. Well, she didn't dump the Starlight Girls. She moved the Starlight Girls to a better equipped charity, which Kimber apparently didn't appreciate, and so she left, and Jem sold the rights to, um, uh, to the Jem catalog to Eric, and apparently uh, Kimber was so distracted by stuff that she didn't realize that he also picked up a majority stake in Starlight and uh, their likeness rights. So what he's doing now is he cleared the... He's going to use the holograms to open for the Stingers, but he's not going to use the actual holograms act. He's going to use an, an artificial band from Tokyo. We, uh, basically, um, Haruhi Suzumi. No, not Haruhi Suzumi. The, the the Vocaloid. Um, oh my God, <laughs> what the hell is her name? Um, this has got the pigtails. <laughs> what shit? What is her name? Um, um, no, I can't remember her name. Hold that thought. I'll be right back. Hatsune Miku. That's who she could not remember her damn name. Do you know how hard it is to look up the name of someone who you genuinely are just completely blanking on their name? What do you type in a search engine? Uh, Vocaloid. Which one? The, the anime one. Which anime one? The one with the colorful hair and pigtails that doesn't narrow it down. Uh, Hatsune Miku. Um, so it's a set, so it's a digital a band of Hatsune Miku's and I'm not exactly it, it sounds like what he's going to do is he's going to take this digital band and have it overlaid with the likenesses of the holograms you know Ajahn, and Shane and Kimber and such and have them sing uh holograms songs I, I think that's what he's doing I I you think he'd license the technology to do it rather than an actual established band? Because the band is the Phantasms or something. Uh, uh, the Fathoms. Um, I like I like he tried to sign them over to his label, but he couldn't. But he's apparently using them to put on gem to put on gem cosplay. It's kind of weird, but okay. Um, so Pizzazz is having none of this uh, because she's like, I, I, I do not like that. Um, this will not stand. Uh, if I am not going to compete against Hatsune Miku, I'm going to complete, compete against real flesh and blood. I'm going to have to go have a, have a talk with Jerrica. And um, keeping this in mind, uh, this does appear to be in complete continuity with the comic, including that dimension hopping thing, so Pizzazz knows that Jerrica was Jem. She's aware of the hologram stuff, so, th so that's not an issue. So she goes and up to uh, Jerrica's house, where she's been just moping for 20 years, I guess, and Rio's there, so I, I guess they made up, so that's cool. So she goes in and talks to Jerrica, and she, we find out the backstory of, of all what happened, and she thinks about it, and, you know, she misses her family, but, uh, you know, it's the kind of thing where she, she hears from Shane and Aja and such on Christmas, but that's about it. She never hears from Kimber, and she, she's just lonely. I mean, she's with Rio, but she's still lonely and depressed, but, uh, he, she had him throw away all her Synergy stuff years ago, but he kept, you know, like, the, the earrings and stuff, and so she brings Synergy back and asks her for advice, and... Uh, she makes a decision. She goes back into the house and uh, Pizzazz is futzing around in front of her shelf looking at one of her Grammys and goes, eh, that should have been us. <laughs> and let me humiliate myself by uh, admitting to something really embarrassing. 20 minutes ago when I first read through this comic, I was looking at the little Grammy here and I was like, it's a gramophone. Grammys that that's that's why it's called the grant. I get it now Yeah, that Literally never clicked <laughs> until I saw this panel 20 minutes ago um, Anyway, so um Jerrica's charged with getting the band back together. So Shayna 
Uh, let's see. She she runs her own boutique, but you know she's got kids, but they're old enough to take care of themselves for a night. And um, we don't see who who uh, she settled down with. Uh, maybe Tony. Maybe someone else. We don't know. Um, but she has a fashion boutique and she has kids, so you know that's that's what she's doing. Uh, Aja is. Just doing solo work, I guess. I'm not really sure what she's doing, but she's like, yeah, okay. And um, Rhea is running a dance studio. Speaking of which, dance never showed up in the uh, in the comic, did she? That's that's a shame. Would have been interested to see the uh, you know the the reinterpretation of that character, particularly visually. Um, I don't think dance showed up. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, uh, so uh, the la so she keeps emailing Kimber, but Kimber's not responding. So they all uh, go to the office where she works. She she works uh, the office side of music now, and uh, she says, "Okay, fine, I'll, I'll listen to you guys uh, rehearse." But and then she does, and she's in, and the the misfits give them a thumbs up, and they say, "Okay, so how are we going to do this? And Pizzazz says, you know, less you know, the less incriminating it is. You f you worry about the music, we'll worry about the mischief. So they um, essentially lock uh, Eric Bad Guy in a closet. Uh, we The Stingers get handcuffed, get tricked into being handcuffed. The Stingers are kind of boobs, but that's kind of how they were presented in, in this comic continuity anyway. That's you know, it, it doesn't really feel insulting to the characters to end up just being boobs. So, uh, so the, so basically, so the, uh, oh, and the, what did they do? Something, uh, uh, oh yeah, the, the, uh, uh, it's actually set up earlier. Uh, Stormer's apparently been taking uh, programming classes, so she is able to disable the uh, the, the Fathoms band. And um, Rhea, uh, Jem is, uh, or Jerrica is in her Jem persona, but it's not a hologram, it's just a wig. Um, and Rio and uh, 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 Pizzazz is there, and she says, it's showtime, Jerrica, and that, that's nice. And uh, Rio smooches her and says, uh, before you go, before you get off stage, I guess, you know, show them the real gem. So they get on stage, they sing, they're a hit. Uh, she whips off her wig and sings as Jerrica and Pizzazz uh, looks at her uh, from the sidelines and says, that's my girl. And um, that's, that's pretty much it. Are the, uh, you know, the, there's an open question, are the holograms back? Are they going to, uh, is this the, you know, start of holograms version two? And uh, Jerrica just smiles. Maybe? Maybe not. So, um, I really do enjoy the uh, That's My Girl bit from Pizzazz. It's not entirely earned, but there was definitely more than enough from the entire comics run to inform that character and who she is and how she relates to everyone else to indicate that that's where she'd end up. Uh, Pizzazz is a very lonely person who's been abandoned by her family, so she made her own. And she is incredibly um, protective of it. And lashes out angrily at anything that she perceives as jeopardizing her family, but also um, the things she values and loves that she thinks might take, you know, anything that threatens them, like physically or emotionally, yes, but also anything that could possibly threaten to take them away from her. Even if that might be in their best interest, that's something she'll lash out at. She also, I which one was it? I think it was the the, uh, the Christmas special where she uh, gifts Jem the um, the on the go bag that's filled with you know guitar picks and and guitar strings and tape and 
breath mints and toilet paper and an emergency 500 bucks and just everything you could possibly need. Um, she, to pizzazz, a worthy rival, I think, is part of her family to an extent. It's part of her identity, part of who she is. She doesn't hate Gem and the Holograms, I don't think. Uh, she does have a nasty temper and she she does react poorly to things. And she knows that and it drives her nuts and I can relate to that. But she definitely wants, you know, she's jealous of Gem and the Holograms to an extent, but she wouldn't have it any other way. She wants a rival to compete with. Even though some, a lot of times she takes her, you know, her competitive streak way too far. But uh, it looks like she's mellowed out a bit in 20 years and, and has grown up a bit. So that's nice to see. Uh, so uh, a nice capstone on the uh, on the entire comic run, I, I think. Uh, you know, it does a nice job with a limited page count of sell of telling one self contained story that uh, wraps everything up pretty well. We get a nice idea of what's been going on in the last uh, two decades and uh, you know what happened to the various characters, um, and while. I like a lot of things, you know, the misfits were the only ones who actually stayed together because, yeah, they're stubborn enough to do that. I could totally see that happening, you know. The stingers are still pittering around. Uh, the, the holograms broke up after a while, but the misfits were always there. They're like Weird Al Yankovic. They just never go away, and we love them for it. They just change with the times and constantly evolve and get better. It's great. Um, but there are other changes that make me sad, right? Uh, uh, Kimber and Stormer didn't end up together. Not surprising. Things like that happen. But, you know, it's still a shame. It's nice to see that they're, they're still, they still deeply care for one another and are still on friendly terms. That's nice to see. Um, and uh, while one could say, ah, oh, Jerrica would never would never do this, uh, would never sell to Eric. And I had that thought at first too, but th th then I remembered the Eric I'm thinking of is the Eric from the cartoon. And this is the comic book Eric, who isn't, re with the exception of the evil version that was in the other dimension that got everyone killed, this Eric is essentially just the band manager of the Misfits, or at least he was for a time. You know, most of their interactions with Eric Bad Guy in this continuity were fine. So you could see, you know, them like, oh, we know Eric, he, you know, he's with the Misfits. He's kind of annoying, but, you know, he, he's a band manager. It's what he does. He, you know, that was fine. Uh, but it's also, it's like, oh, no, Jared, the whole thing fell apart. Yeah, sometimes things like that happen, even to the best of us, right? A small event, like one album tanking and that, that, that was the domino that just knocked everything over. That's, that's not unrealistic. That stuff can happen. And it's a damn shame. And I, ad I admire this book for being brave enough to, uh, paint a bunch of character, you know, showing people as people. Flawed as hell. So, um, overall, uh, the con there, there was a lot I liked, uh, in this uh, run of Gem Comics. Um, I think there was a lot of really interesting reinterpretations of the characters, a lot of really interesting things they, um, they, they were doing with the story. I think the biggest issue was space. I, I get the sense that there was some trouble behind the scenes with the production. That's what it feels like to me. I honestly don't know, but it does feel like maybe they were granted more pages and then those pages got reduced and they had to restructure things. Um, Twenty fifty. Yeah, this all happened before the pandemic, so that it wasn't that... Um, but yeah, uh, a lot of it feels like there there were some 
they change their minds on a bunch of uh, plot points and say, oh, they set things up and like, oh, wait, that's not going to work. Let's kind of forget that. Oh, wouldn't it be cool if we did this? But we didn't really set it up. But that's ah, such a good idea. Let's kind of pivot into it. Right. It didn't flow very well. There were a lot of really great individual ideas throughout the entire run. But sometimes they just didn't flow into one another well. And that's a shame. But all in all, I had a really delightful time uh, reading through these. Uh, as critical as I, I can be at times. Um, but, um, yeah. Uh, Gem and the Holograms. It's, it's, it's good.